During the Cold War's most awful years, the United States and the Soviet Union fought in a nuclear cat and mouse game. The best agents on the other side of the Berlin Wall faced off against KGB spies out to steal American secrets. In the aftermath of World War II, distrust and anger exploded between the two superpowers. Federal authorities were swamped with the constant stream of spies into the United States, particularly on the East Coast. Although strong assumptions and despite their efforts in revealing a spy network, there was never concrete evidence of the KGB spy. The anger and resentment of the U.S. by not finding any real proof laid the foundation for what is known as Operation Lemonade. This is the story of a U.S. Navy officer turned into a double spy and helping the FBI catch the first ever KGB spies in history who always seemed unreachable. Let's have a look at the sophistication of this FBI operation and their successes in catching Soviet spies, all while learning a great deal of the KGB spycraft. It was the 9th of April, 1977, when the FBI approached Navy Lieutenant Commander Arthur Lindbergh as a potential candidate for a counterintelligence operation. The FBI had their suspicions of the recruitment of spies by the Soviet intelligence community on cruise ships, and they orchestrated these missions and operations from their office in the United Nations. This office was a front for their espionage efforts, all under the cloak of the UN, which would not be a place you went looking for spies in the first place. Arthur Lindbergh was the perfect double spy, as he was approaching retirement and was a high-ranking Navy officer. Both combined gives you the likelihood of being recruited and betraying your country, since you are likely in need of a little extra cash for your retirement. And because of his position within the Navy, he had access to top secret information he could sell. They anticipated that this would be enough to persuade the Soviet agents to reveal themselves. His mission statement was very clear, gathering enough evidence and gaining their trust to eventually be part of an operation that would lure Soviet spies into a trap, catching them in the act and proving their suspicions right. Arthur agreed. Operation Lemonade was a go. First contact. Arthur purchased tickets for the MS Kazakhstan, the Soviet cruise ship in question which was being used by the Soviets to recruit spies. Before his disembarking at the end of the cruise, he had given a note to one of the crew members containing a letter and told them it was addressed to the Russian ambassador, who held home at the unsanctioned United Nations headquarters of the KGB. The letter stated who he was and that he was willing to sell information for a solid price, which would come in very handy with his upcoming retirement. The 30th of August, 1977, Arthur Lindbergh was contacted via a public payphone out of New Jersey. His cover name was Ed, and the person on the other side of the line called himself Jim. Jim was curious about what kind of information Ed could get his hands on and gave him a price. Not much later, he would be contacted again and asked for more information about certain pieces of information, likely as a form of validation of some sort. In the month of October in the same year, he received a note with instructions which were sent by the Soviet spies. It would be one of many instruction letters sent to the double agent Arthur Lindbergh, who was in fact a spy that was recruited by the Naval Investigative Service. They had the most interest in nuclear submarines, and in order to catch these spies, they'd better come up with some valuable, legitimate information to leak. Nothing was more far from the truth, as Ed was actually leaking already declassified information. A very common way of leaking and sharing this data with the supposed handlers are so-called dead drops. A dead drop allows secure communication by one person leaving and the other person picking up material later at a prearranged location. This was also very efficient as no direct contact was needed and if not drawing too much attention, this would be a very stealthy way of getting your information across. However, because of the prearranged nature of this mission, they traced the person who was picking up the dead drops left behind by the double agent. Following in his every footstep in the course of several months, the person picking up the dead drops would later be identified as Rudolf Chernyev, a Russian personnel officer at the UN. He was one of three KGB spies who were actively recruiting military personnel in the U.S. in the hopes to get valuable and highly classified information, which they could use to their advantage. They could trace and follow Chernyev as long as needed, and ultimately found out the identities of the other two KGB agents. These would later be identified 
as Valdik Inger and Vladimir Zanyatkin. Now, with these identities revealed, the only thing that is left is to catch them in the act. By providing actual classified information, the case could be made rock solid if one of the three KGB agents picked it up. The Trap May 20th, 1978, Lindbergh was given five canisters with actual classified material. Hiding inside the trunk of his car were two FBI agents, ready to catch them red-handed when picking up the canisters. Many other agents formed the backup for the operation and were all around the drop site. Lindbergh was instructed to pick up a can labeled Ann Page Bartlett Pears, and he dropped off the canisters, all in a matter of seconds, and drove off. All the months of gathering evidence, listening to their phone calls, learning about their way of working had come to this moment. Not much later, the FBI saw Valdik Inger and Rudolf Chernev approaching and arrested them immediately after grabbing the canisters. The third KGB agent, Vladimir Zanyakin, was also found at the scene and was arrested, but had diplomatic immunity and would be ultimately deported back to the Soviet Union. Both Valdik and Rudolf were the first two ever caught KBG agents that stood trial and were sentenced to 50 years in prison. Ultimately, they'd been exchanged for five Soviet dissidents. During Operation Lemonade, Lindbergh charged Soviet spies a total of around $16,000 in exchange for top secret naval documents. For his excellent contribution to the success of the operation, Arthur Lindbergh was awarded the Medal of Merit. In conclusion, the FBI dubbed this Operation Lemonade, and at the time, the name had no meaning. But as the case developed, it seemed to fit more and more. Why? Because as they tracked the steady stream of phone calls and letters between Lindbergh and the Soviets, they learned a tremendous amount about Soviet spycraft in the 70s. The Soviets repeatedly passed messages and money to Lindbergh in the most ordinary everyday items. Magnetic key holders placed in phone booths, cigarette packs, soda cans, orange juice cartons, and even a rubber hose. In the end, it was one of the most prolific espionage cases of that decade. The operation not only demonstrated suspicious activity at the Soviet's UN headquarters, but also provided US intelligence with a steep learning curve, but provided insights that strengthened its guidance on how the KGB and other foreign security organizations conducted espionage. This is the end of the video. I hope that you find this story intriguing and learned something new. Please consider subscribing and leave a like. See you all in the next video.